Sleep Heroes 2 multiplayer can lead to games hinging on small, negligible decisions that lead to massive consequences. Realizing these minuscule gameplay impacts can lead to a victory instead of a close defeat. I'm Grayshot151. I have a lot of time in Company of Heroes 2, and I'm not a competitive or meta player, but I am a very good player. In today's video, I want to go over these situations and detail how they will improve your game and why. So without further ado, let's dive in. The first recommendation I can give is something I mentioned in my previous How to Open American video, and that is smoke. Smoke can really help turn the tide, especially against MG fortifications or heavily defensible positions. If you notice MGs or bunkers, smoke can basically render them non-existent without the need for their destruction. If, as you can see in the gameplay below, the enemy had multiple MGs, but with smoke we were able to basically render them useless and force the Axis to fight man-to-man -man in close range, which was to our advantage in this combat. So if you're ever in a position where MGs are just constantly raining down on you, I would highly recommend, no matter the faction that you're playing, getting a mortar and dropping some smoke on the enemy and making them pay for their MG spam. My second recommendation has to be caches. Now, caches can be both munition and fuel, and I would always overall recommend munition caches, no matter the faction. Uh, usually for access, I'd say half munition, half fuel, while allies, I would definitely recommend more munition caches, if not total munition caches. But the main recommendation I have in, today, in this video is placement. Now, you do in the end, if especially in a longer term game, want your caches to be on every available space. But in the early game, when your front line maybe isn't as solid as in the later uh, portions of the game, my recommendation is look at the map. Notice what area has the best uh, front line or most defensible front line and place your caches more so on that side and then as the game develops, place them further to your side or the side that is weakest. This will ensure that they are not destroyed because they are an investment and the longer that they are on the field, the more you're getting in a return on your investment. So very simply, place your caches on the most defensible side and then as the game develops, place them all across the battlefield. My third recommendation is equipment destruction. Now, if you're thinking about this economically, it is far more expensive for someone to completely buy a machine gun, a mortar, an anti-tank gun, than it is simply to reman it on the battlefield. Don't allow your enemy to take advantage of this. Destroy the equipment when you can. This is never a priority, but it really does make an impact, especially over the long term. I cannot tell you how many times, like versing OKW, I've destroyed Rakuten after Rakuten after Rakuten, and it has finally begun to wear them down manpower-wise. So, remember, destroy equipment, as while it may seem minor, every instance is essentially you wiping an enemy infantry squad or killing a vehicle, something when you're trying to grind down your enemy you never want to pass up. The fourth recommendation I would have is defensive works. Now, this I think is most opportune with the American, but if you notice a front that is not having a lot of activity and you can spare your rear echelon, go just fortify that side. Uh, in Port of Hamburg, this is best on the uh, the northern bridge or the bridges in particular. If you don't want to flank and you just want to seal that area off, it's best to put tank traps down and then put some barbed wire and continue to do this over and over and over again. On a front that you're not really seeing that much activity, again, put tank traps down, put barbed wire down, put machine gun bunkers down. It's something small that your rear echelon that you're not going to be throwing to the front line can do that will really make your enemy not want to attack that side anymore and maybe keep the enemy in a position that is to your advantage and then maybe if the enemy is forced to finally attack your side it'll be so costly that it'll be the final nail in the coffin and ensure your victory on the battlefield the fifth one's pretty quick and this one is more so for long-term games and that is anti-air anti-air uh like the half tracks of the soviet or american the centaur or the bofer helps stop infantry, but it also helps take out a lot of the benefits of enemy reconnaissance or airstrikes. The same can be said for the Axis. So when you have a half track of the OKW or a verbal wind, they're good on the offense and they're great at stopping reconnaissance and taking out the power of enemy airstrikes. If you can imagine, it's essentially a tech card you can use to nullify the best traits of an enemy commander. And you can also think about it as 
by buying this unit, by buying this anti-air, you're essentially helping prevent the loss of your Jackson, your Sherman, your Firefly, your King Tiger, whatever it may be. So overall, it can help nullify reconnaissance, help nullify airstrikes, save your units, and even lock down a point. With all those benefits, you can really see why maybe in theory is only good at one thing, but can have so many benefits across the battlefield. My last and biggest recommendation for overall multiplayer gameplay improvements is knowing who has recon and who has a direct strike. In many games, whether Axis or Allies, artillery is a major turning point. And it can, it, when it's used effectively, it can swing a game that was on the back end to a victory position. Don't allow this to happen. Try to ensure that one of your allies has a recon ability and someone else has direct strike. Having this combination can destroy enemy artillery, maybe an ambulance, maybe you can hit the enemy, uh, let's say an OKW on the retreat back to their base. Overall, having a recon and a direct strike can ensure that static emplacements behind enemy lines can still be targetable and that their investment into such resources for your enemy is negligible at best and that it's a momentary advantage that is quickly nullified. So these are small improvements that you can make on each multiplayer game that you should be able to see gradual improvements and better chances at victory or if not closer games than if you were to just ignore these types of uh, recommendations. In any case, I'm Grayshot151. I hope you've enjoyed these small recommendations and I hope to see you guys next time in my next video in Company of Heroes 2. Until then, I'll catch you all later. Hey guys, before you go, let me give a special shout to Afria, Folkford, Joey G240, Balam, Ace, Tony B, Ion, Little Koosh, Samo McKinney, Seth Coopers, and Jacob Oswai. Thank you guys so much for your awesome support and generosity. If you guys want additional content, check out the links above. Otherwise, I'll see all of you next time.